Well, everyone, uh, once again, I want to offer a warm welcome. I'm Tom Case, honored to be chancellor here at UAA. And uh, one of my very best experiences uh, over the years has been to get to know Ann and Al Parrish in many capacities. And so for me as a chancellor and for all of us here uh, as a university community, uh, we're, we're really excited to be here to dedicate this bridge that connects two sides of the street, two important programs, and two anchor students in the UMED district. Quite a bit of symbology there, three different aspects to this bridge. And while it is a wonderfully engineered and constructed engineering accomplishment and a physical connection, it's also symbolic of UA's connections and the connections forged by the couple for whom it is going to be named. <laughs> Alan and Parrish have been deeply involved in the, in the state and, and in university affairs for more than three decades. Both no, been I'm not that old. I know you're not, but Al is. <laughs> Al, Al is. Uh, Come on. Both been steadfast advocates, advisors, donors, and friends of the university during all that time. We're going to have the opportunity to hear more from, from Ann and, and Al a bit later. But now I want to introduce another UAA alumnus, Mike Fierro who helped design this 225 foot sweep of metal and glass that so beautifully crosses Providence Drive and provides that connecting point. So Mike, could I bring you to the mic? Thank you, Chancellor Case. Um, when I was thinking about how to approach this talk, I was looking at two ways to do it either embrace brevity or try to be humorous and charming. And I asked my uh, co-workers, you know, what I should do, and the unanimous <laughs> response was, well, we don't know what that brevity thing is, but you really shouldn't talk that much. <laughs> uh, but I've been asked to speak uh, about my uh, involvement on the project, you know, from the standpoint as a UAA alumnus. Uh, 30 years ago, I was an undergrad in the engineering school, and the one building or structure that I was really fascinated with on the campus was the spine. It was this big, cool structure up in the air. It was like 100 yards long, and it had this ominous framework underneath it. I used to like to walk underneath it and look up at it and admire it, and I actually envied the people that got to work on that, and, and I was impressed and inspired by the the designers and everything that went into it. I had no idea what, what it would be like. And, you know, someday I hoped I could do something like, like that. So three years ago, the university approached the Livingston Sloan design team and they said, well, we want a bridge from the EIB to the HSB. Uh, we want it to be aesthetic, we want it to be unique, and it has to clear span the entire Providence Drive corridor. Uh, so the design team, we got together over at Livingston Sloan and, and uh, we were tasked with three options to present. And during the meeting, I was sitting there and I was doodling on a piece of scratch paper and I came up with a, a little sketch and I said, hey guys, what do you think of this? It was two arches kind of leaning together uh, with a corridor running, running underneath them. And everyone went, cool, yeah, let's, let's try that. Uh, so that became one of our design options, and when we presented it to the university, uh, they they liked it, and that's uh, and then the rest is history. Uh, part of part of the design, it wasn't just the design team doing it; it was a collaborative effort with Neeser uh, Construction and their erectors and their fabricators. We had to use them to design this bridge. Uh, it was necessary. I don't think we could have done it without their design input during during construction, and we had a really narrow window uh, for the erection to take place over over Christmas break. And those guys those guys were just amazing. Uh, so it, it just goes without saying that it's just been a huge privilege and an honor to be part of this project. Uh, few engineers in the course of their careers ever get to work on something this this unique, and for that. I'm, just eternally grateful. And, uh, you know, now I wonder, uh, 
if there's engineering students out there that someday will be walking along this bridge, looking out at the framework and admiring it, thinking, wow, you know, what about the people that did that? You know, really envying them and being inspired like I was 30 years ago. And I think that would be a truly wonderful legacy. So, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Those were inspiring words, and uh, I share your vision for future generations doing great things like, like this generation uh, has done. Now on to Al and Ann. I'll name just a few of their accomplishments because if I listed them all, we'd be here for many hours. Ann earned her bachelor's degree in accounting last month. Yeah. Last, last, last month. Yeah. On Tuesday. Um, on Tuesday. Yeah. Actually, a little longer than that, but uh, it, it was. Uh, Just color her again. <laughs> something we're very proud of. Uh, later, she became the first uh, female chair of the University of Alaska's Board of Regents. That's where this color came <laughs> She served as the chair of the University of Alaska Foundation, Board of Trustees, and was among the founders, and I find this very special, of the uh, Celebrity Chef Invitational, our annual fundraiser for the Culinary Arts Program, which is a gala event. It's, it's wonderful. If you haven't been, you really should go next it's time. It's really delicious. It is delicious, and it's fun. I, I'm also honored tonight to announce uh, the winner and to talk a little bit about Anne's first ever coloring contest but she launched this year to help create a ribbon design for kids' cancer. I understand that we have the head artistic judge with us this evening, Marianne Schwalling. Marianne, are you here? Wave your hand. Yeah, Marianne, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Val. Um, I also understand that the winner of the first annual contest is here tonight, and I've had the pleasure of meeting him. Certainly a future Seawolf. Daniel Calvin. Daniel, where are you? Daniel, come on up here and shake my hand. And always pleased to be a future senior. Can you tell me about the way that this came together for you? Just inspiration. Maybe not. I'll tell you. I, because it, you have to look at it up close. But uh, it has a lot of basketballs on it and some stars because you're going to be an NBA basketball star, right? Uh huh. And then down here on the ribbon it says, what does it say? Jesus? I love you. Uh, I can do all things. And is this, is this a rainbow? Yeah. yeah. And that's you, right? And that was absolutely hands down the best entry. If you don't believe me, ask her. Thank you, Daniel. That, that is amazing artwork, very inspirational and artistic. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll go back there and eat some desserts. <laughs> We're going to keep that picture here for the duration of the evening, so please feel free to take a good look at it. It's really quite amazing. Uh, and so thank you, Ann, for always bringing warmth and joy to uh, this project and to, to so many others. Al has spent the better part of three decades, and I can say that to Al, three decades. Yeah. I mean, it's could have um, been four. Could have been four. Um, <laughs> enhancing the Providence Health Care system in Alaska, uh, originally on local and national policy boards, and then a CEO of the Alaska uh, system. As Providence CEO, he nurtured connections with UAA, which we enjoy to this day, swapping land, offering support and training opportunities to nursing students, and working with many UAA leaders uh, to draw the hospital and the university closer together in so many ways. And I. I really benefited from that, Alan, appreciate the experience and the, the times I had with that. And uh, this, this isn't in the script, but I also want to add, 
uh, two really wonderful sea wolf hockey fans right here. We, that, that's where I see them. Most, they never win, but we win. They're always there for us. It, it, it's good. Um, and not only have, have UAA and the bridge and Providence uh, prospered, but the whole um, UMED district, really, Al, has, has benefited from your wisdom and energy over, over those decades. Uh, we can't think of anything more fitting than to name this bridge for you. It'll be a lasting tribute um, for both of you who have helped grow and connect these institutions in, in truly meaningful ways. So congratulations, Al and Ann. And now the time has come for me to ask you to help unveil the plaque which will be here always commemorating the naming of this bridge. My picture is better now. And the script does say, as soon as we unveil the plaque, clap, clap, clap. So we'll have, we'll have great applause. Okay, are we ready? Chancellor and, and Mike, uh, thank you for designing the structure that we've been honored and blessed that other university to have named after us. And, and um, Chancellor, thank you uh, very much for the honor. Um, now this is a tribute, not um, uh, as much for me as it is for the, my partner in my life. It has been her 35 plus years that she's been associated with the university that as really, um, I'm kind of the tail end of this process in reference to the recognition of the bridge of being named after us. But we are both so truly honored and blessed that the university would think as highly as they have to uh, name this bridge um, the Parish Bridge. Um, my role in this um, aspect over the years, is, as the Chancellor has stated, has been on this side of the and oh, Dan you have been, to a celebrity uh, chef. You have his money over there. I did. And we did, honey. And um, so the symbolism that this represents to the parish family because of the connection between these two campuses uh, is not unrecognized by us. And we are uh, extremely honored, very pleased, and deeply uh, thankful that the university has chosen to name this bridge uh, the Parish Bridge. Um, <clears throat> We have traveled, um, or have had traveled our family from all over the United States. Uh, so from uh, across the United States, Atlanta, Georgia, to Southern California, the Paso Robles area, and Tacoma, Washington. Anne's going to take the time to introduce it's them to okay. Anyway, she's, she's uh, one of the hecklers in the crowd tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this is not by any way that I'm common. <laughs> So again, uh, thank you for being here this evening, and, and again, thank you for the recognition that um, the university has bestowed upon us. And Anne, I'll now turn it over to you, and Chester, again, our deepest thanks. Thank you. They gave us five minutes, and Al has just taken four. And I have to say, the big mystery for me here tonight is that 30 years ago, Mike, you on this campus? Are you the guy I hit with my bike while I was coming from from work yes. after seeing yes. you? <laughs> you couldn't you know it. And I saw a vision of an arch. <laughs> <laughs> with that. McKenna, don't run away with her. Oh, she's run away. Okay, for those of you who don't mean, know me in this color hair, I have worn this color hair with colors in it, uh, but the real reason we have this color tonight is that 
1982, I went on the Board of Regents, and I had beautiful, wasn't I, it was beautiful, long, oh, yeah. long, Sharon Gagnon can vouch for it. And so when I went on the Board of Regents, it was this color. And in 2012, when I went off the foundation board, it was this color. <laughs> and, and that's what happens. You know, you get older, you have troubles. And, uh, and uh, I can't even begin to express um, what a wonderful trip it's been, being in the trouble that I've been in with the University of Alaska. And when I think about this bridge, I go back to a little guy. How tall was Don O'Dowd? This big, maybe? This big? Yeah, Don O'Dowd was the president that a certain board of regents stole from the New York SUNY system to come up here and scratch his head and figure out what he would do with 14, 14 separately accredited institutions. Uh, their own presidents, their own payroll offices, all that stuff. And then, you guys might have heard about this happening, but 30 years ago, the price went down on oil, and the university became a target for how to save money. And a lot of people thought, closed Juno and all the rural campuses. And this guy, Don O'Gall, says, well, you know, I got another idea. And his idea was UAF, UAA, and UAS. And today, they do just about anything they want, but there were certain things that the regents and Don O'Dowd suggested we do, and one of them was to make Anchorage the statewide headquarters for health education. And, you know, we could have had a lot of campuses try to teach nursing, uh, but they said, no, it'll be done in Anchorage and by distance everywhere else. And so when I look at that building or those buildings or whatever, I flash back to when we said, it's going to happen in Anchorage, it's going to happen here, we're going to be the best. And that's really all I want to say except about these people that are here. Should we do them by the order they got to the planet? Absolutely. Okay, Kate, that means you have to stand up, <laughs> stop videoing. This is our daughter, uh, Mary Catherine, Katie, and she's been a lot of troublemaker. She lives in uh, your she lives in Tacoma now, but she does wonderful things, particularly with children who need special attention. And, uh, oh, there's Grandma Beth. Come on, Beth, that would be That's you. That's it, parish, not Grandma Beth. <laughs> anyway, she is a grandmother way too young. Uh, that man was a father way too young. It's a genetic disorder. And, and this is Beth. Beth lives, if you ever want to go have some good wine, go to Paso Robles, California. That's Beth. Uh, oh, yeah. Then there's the woman who has feet that don't match. That would be Laura, our daughter. <laughs> and uh, She's she, in a cast. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> let's clarify that. The truth of the matter is she dropped the box on her own foot. Okay. But anyway, she's here from Atlanta and sometimes Florida, hanging on to this guy that likes to race Porsches. <laughs> that would be Jerry Peters. And I have no idea how to explain you, Chuck. But Chuck Nobody is else engaged. does either. Yeah, Chuck, is, <laughs> Chuck is engaged to Beth, and she's still thinking about it. And oh, no, 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 no. She better not be. Oh, no, I said yes. <laughs> and, 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 Without the dress. And then this guy over here. Come on. It's not come here. This is, this is somebody to really be proud of. This is Wilson Middleton. Uh, Wilson is a UAA alum. Yeah, uh, you're, if you come to school here, you're an alum. Well, you don't have to graduate. But they didn't have programs that did what he wanted to be. Exactly. So, you want to talk or should I? No, oh, let's do that. Anyway, he ran away to Tacoma to a place called Bates Technical College and graduated at the top of his class. Allie's next. This is Allie Mahachek. Oh, we're so tall. <coughs> Allie goes to uh, which? It, it's San Luis Obispo. Where do you go? That's Cuesta College. Louder. Cuesta College. Cuesta College. And, and she got really good grades this semester. She doesn't know what she's going to do, but she's getting good grades. <laughs> Where's that kid with the kid? He's coming. They're walking. Oh, they're coming Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about McKenna. Yeah, McKenna's a pretty special granddaughter, 
And um, yeah, it is genetic. We now have Addison. <laughs> and Alan and I are way too young to be great grandparents. Hi, Abby. But this is my, this beautiful woman is McKenna. And um, McKenna's being a great mom. And we, hi, Abby. And, uh, and how would you describe you, Jeremy? Jeremy is the other half of taking care of Addison. So, yeah. Awesome. What did we say? Awesome. Handsome. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, I have to tell you what I say about him sometimes. I say he's Al Parrish as a puppy. <laughs> uh, can I just have one more? Should I stop now? Al wants me to stop, and, and here's why. Because Al knows what I'm going to do next. Do you know? No, honey, I'm a little afraid right now. <laughs> right. This is what I'm going to say. Look me in the eye. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to all that I can be. That's all. Does that bring a tear to your eye? In fact, that's it's a little better than I had I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Tears of relief. <laughs> you know, 42 years for me, it was sweet either way. Well, Ann and, and Al and the uh, extended parish family who's uh, here tonight. Uh, we want to tell you what a, what a special day this is for us. And we think that you've also gathered by now that our alumni are pretty important to us. In fact, very important to us. And alumni are coming on strong, representing UAA, not only in Alaska, but in every state in the union, and an increasing number of countries in addition to the United States. And we're, we're very pleased with that. Also increasing in, in the scope and activity and fun are alumni events. And this wonderful ceremony is a prelude to the next ceremony tonight, or activity tonight, uh, which is uh, our newly minted uh, annual event called Nine in the Spine. And it's a uh, extravaganza type opportunity to demonstrate your golf skills in the spine. <laughs> And we're pleased that you have agreed, and Al, to be our honorary marshals. So we're going to give you some new sea wolf gear to go with this role. And chop your tea and off for me. Oh man! <laughs> and we'll invite you to uh, join me at our honorary hole. This is too small, I'm sure. Mine's too big. <laughs> so we look forward to this uh, nine the spine event. <laughs> I know. But anyway, thanks everyone for being here. Uh, lots of good food and drink left uh, there. Please feel free to mingle. Have a good evening. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for all you